There is a striking contrast between the scale at which the biology of living systems is described and the scale at which these systems are generally studied. And whether you turn to a biologist or a dictionary for a definition of biology, you'll get a pretty broad and macroscopic picture of the kinds of things that living systems such as cells actually do, how they survive, feed, reproduce, evolve and so on. But ask almost any modern biologist about their research and the chances are you'll hear something quite different. A description of a myriad interaction of genes and proteins all taking place inside living cells at a scale that is orders of magnitude smaller than anything that corresponds with their original definition of biology. We seek to understand biological systems in functional and relatively macroscopic terms but most of our knowledge about them is obtained at a scale that is much, much smaller, more like the kind of scale that a chemist would operate at. At this molecular level, even the description of a single living cell constitutes a storm of information that can quickly deluge the biologist if there's no way to organise it and to make sense of it all. And the widespread use of omics and high-throughput approaches in biology in recent years has created a field that is literally awash in data. Models are wonderful frameworks within which to capture all of this data and to put it to work, organising and orienting information and providing the translational tools that make it possible for scientists to bridge that vital gap between data and knowledge. All that said, however, modelling is unlikely to be embraced in the mainstream of biological research if the approaches available to biologists require them to be either mathematicians or computer scientists to use them. Just imagine how much less successful the automobile would have been as a means of transportation had the technology required everybody who drove one to be a mechanic. The ideal modelling platform for biology would allow the researcher to describe a complex biological system to a computer in a rigorous yet familiar and intuitive idiom that could be easily read and understood by fellow biologists even if they were approaching the model for the very first time. Similarly, the model would also deliver clear and comprehensible results that are readily interpretable by other scientists and perhaps most importantly of all, actually testable in a laboratory. The choice of a flexible and easy to read modelling idiom is also critical if you want to take advantage of the marvellous capacity that models have to serve as vehicles for collaboration and for the communication of knowledge and ideas. Just think about the evolution of computer languages for example. Early programming languages were pretty close to the processor's own instruction set which made them easy for the computer to translate into executable code but a royal pain to be read by any other human being. As operating systems and applications became increasingly complex, the need for collaboration in the software development process fueled a demand for more flexible and transparent metaphors for programming computers. Coming full circle now back to biology, the incredible complexity of living systems will require collaboration to be an essential part of biological research. And what this means to biologists is that if they want to collaborate effectively, they're really going to need to be encoding their models in an idiom that is flexible and clear in the way that Java and Ruby are, rather than trying to share their ideas in some kind of arcane biological assembly language. Doing biological modelling on computers also opens up a whole world of possibilities for research collaboration via the internet. And with the advent of cloud computing, collaboration need no longer be restricted to the simple exchange of information. Once a biologist has migrated his modelling work onto the cloud, it can be instantly shared with colleagues pretty much anywhere on the planet. Furthermore, this research can be shared as living, breathing documents that convey high-level ideas and insights into the mechanisms of living systems. They can also facilitate the generation and testing of hypotheses 
and serve as vehicles for the kind of rigorous scientific debate that actually drives the advancement of knowledge. The biologist is no longer just saying, here are the results of my research, what do you think? But rather, here are the results of my research, test them for yourself. It is interesting to reflect on a potential future in which the monster of biological complexity, the emergent property of a multitude of tiny interactions within living cells, is eventually tamed by an analogous emergent property of the semantic web, the concerted scientific efforts of an interconnected global research community.